Good evening and welcome to Illinois Law. This is a program sponsored by the Illinois State Bar Association. Our topic today is the law school experience, so you want to get into law school. We've assembled a panel of lawyers to help you get to and through law school. Our panelists are Julie A. Neubauer. Julie is a 2007 graduate of the Northern Illinois University College of Law and she practices in matrimonial and family law. She practices with the law firm of Ehrenberg, Gogan Davis, and Garmisa. Our second panelist is Rory Dean Smith. Rory is a 1983 graduate of the Northwestern Law School, an Associate Dean for Outreach and Planning, and Director of Diversity Affairs and Programming at the John Marshall Law School. He is a member of the ABA Council for Racial and Ethnic Diversity, and he is a member of the Law School Admissions Council Subcommittee for Historically Black Colleges and Hispanic Associates of College and Universities. Mackenzie Hyde is an associate at Clark Hill PLC. She practices in probate, guardianship, and estate litigation. She is a graduate of the Loyola University School of Law in 2009 and participated in the Elder Law Clinic prior to law school. Prior to law school, I'm sorry, she was a member of Teach for America and taught elementary school in North Lawndale. Welcome. Thank you. Let's begin our discussion about what does it take to get into law school? If well, Lori, uh, give me a little idea of... One of the opportunities that I get to do at John Marshall Law School is go out and recruit law students. Uh, we go to colleges, uh, but when you look at the educational pipeline of what feeds into school, it really is the, the road to law school begins in the earliest ages, elementary school and high school, and then into college. And so preparation begins very early on. Uh, what law schools look for, they look for students who have taken uh, rigorous programming in high school, they've done AP courses when they've gone to college, they've done a variety of, of work, including uh, a lot of reading and history and understanding how to write, and the benefit of having the mathematics, being able to logically figure out how to solve problems. So, and so there's a variety of different uh, uh, majors that you can do. One of the, the big things about admission is you want to make sure that you've got great grades and then you've got a, a great law school admission test score. And that admission test looks for uh, students who have, can do logical reasoning. There's uh, sections on logical analysis, logic word games, and there's also reading comprehension and reading analysis. Uh, and so that's a good start to prepare uh, educationally and academically. Excellent. Julie, what's the LSAT? Tell us a little bit about that and well, the LSAT what it involves. Well, the LSAT is the test that you take in preparation to apply for law school. And what's great about the LSAT is there's no math. And for those of us who didn't do great in math in high school and college, and you still want to pursue your career and, and continue your education, unlike the MCAT and the other tests for graduate school, GRE among them, there is no math on the LSAT. The logic and the, the language reasoning portions are difficult, but the preparation is, is right up your alley if you're not. Well, we hear about these preparation courses. Um, can you speak to that? Do the preparation courses help I took with a preparation the LSAT? Court. I okay. did, and I found it useful. It allows you to take practice examinations and to test yourself against the clock and to test yourself against the, the test itself, the um, practice books that come with the coursework are based off of prior exams that have be, been given in the past. And um, it also prepares you for three years down the line when you take those bar preparation courses as well. Mackenzie, um, what should one know before deciding to go to law school? Is it necessary to know what specialty you want to um, go into? No, I don't necessarily think you need to know exactly what you want to go into, but I think that you need to have a better reason for going to law school than just, I don't know what else to do, I don't really want to get a job yet, so I'll go to law school. Um, you know, 
10 years ago that might have been okay and you might have been able to get, graduate law school and find a job, but the way that the market is now, it's really important that if you decide to go to law school that you, you're intentional about it, you have an understanding of what you might want to do with that career, and that it's really something you want to do versus just something you, you know, oh, I'm an English major, I don't know, you know, I don't want to be a high school history teacher or English teacher, so I'll go to law school. Um, so in that respect, I think it is important that you have some degree of understanding of why you're going. However, knowing the exact practice area that you want to go into is not, is not necessary because you're going to be exposed to so many different areas once you're in law school. Right. You know, and, and the way in which you articulate what your interest in law school is when you're applying to law school, you have an opportunity to give a personal statement. And in that personal statement, you're able to express yourself, what it is that motivates you, what's your desire. Uh, you know, one of the wonderful things about the practice of law is one person can make a difference. You can make a difference by the kind of law that you write, you draft, uh, the kinds of advocacy that you do to, to, to help a person. You can, in some law schools, have clinics where they protect the innocent that have maybe have been found guilty and, and find a way to, to, to right a wrong. And so if you're able to articulate what it is that drives you about law school, then law schools take, a, take time and they look at your application. They look beyond uh, or in addition to looking at your grades and your, uh, your LSAT score, they look at who you are as a person. I know that's what we do at John Marshall Law School. We, we look to see what is it that drives this person. You know, if you're looking at the LSAT score, the, the lowest score you can get is a 120, the highest score you can get is a 180. The elite schools look for scores, you know, 170 and above. Uh, strong uh, schools uh, that are competitive are looking at the 160 to 170 area. Schools that are trying to provide opportunities and access, you might find their median LSAT score in the 150, 150, probably the 157 area. John Marshall's are about 157 as a median. So that means our upper quartile, somewhere above that, the lower quartile, maybe somewhere like 153. But if you look at what, why those scores are important, the scores give you an, an indication of success on your first time bar pass rate. And that's the correlation that's made between the LSAT score and, uh, and what your ultimate first time bar pass rate is. Well, why is that important? Because the law schools want to know that the students that go through a program are able to advance past the bar and become lawyers. And that bar exam is the, the, the test that you take bec before you become a, uh, a lawyer. Uh, and so law schools are sometimes evaluated by what their first time bar pass rate. I mean, ultimate bar pass rates, you know, in the 90 percentile. But the first time bar pass rate is what schools are measured by often. Uh, among other things. And so that's why that's important. Uh, some schools around the country will give you an opportunity even if you're below those numbers. Uh, John Marshall has a program during the summer called Scales where if your numbers don't fit, you get an opportunity to demonstrate your ability for law school and then you might be, in, depending on your performance, you'd be invited into the law school. And there are lots of schools that have different programs and look for unique things. So that's the variety of applications that you, you schools you look at Decide where you fit. Go for some REACH schools. Go for some schools that fit sort of the numbers that you have. And, and go for some safety schools. Uh, don't try just to, to apply to your REACH schools. And that will afford you the greatest possibility for success in your application process. And Gilda, if I may, in regards to knowing what practice area you want to go in from the get-go, I happen to be one of those people who went into law school knowing I wanted to be in matrimonial and family law. And having the opportunity to you know, start with that goal and go all the way through and then actually have it come to fruition and I do practice in that area now is great. But what's fantastic about the law is it's so multifaceted that you can start in one practice area and then change throughout your career as you evolve and grow as a lawyer and as an individual. And the same is true as a student. You can go into law school thinking you're going to do one area of law, you're going to be a particular attorney. Halfway through you can change your mind and it's okay. Mm -hmm. And law school provides you opportunities through the various activities and the various extracurricular programs through the school that will allow you to explore different areas, different types of law, whether it's litigation or writing or public interest and public service. Various facets will be provided in the law school arena. Excellent. Well, that's interesting. Um, let, let's talk a little bit about the coursework um, for law school. Um, what does it typically involve? Let's say the, the first year, can you go in taking what you want or? First year's like tough. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the first year is your core curriculum. That's the curriculum where you're going to take contracts, you'll take 
property and torts and perhaps civil procedure, but you'll, all, or you'll also have legal writing. And depending on the particular school you go to, they'll set that up for you and you probably won't have electives in your first semester. You may have some electives, one or two, in your second semester, but it's really the fundamental baseline for law school. And, you know, we talked that about first year. that first year. We talked about the LSAT and how that predicts your first time bar pass rate. Well, there is a clear correlation, but there's an even greater correlation for your first year GPA so that you can throw away your LSAT score on, uh, based on how you did in your first year of law school. That really predicts uh, even greater correlation uh, with first time bar pass rate than anything else. So the, the key then is to work really hard. As Julie said, first year of law school is tough, and it is. It's, and it's tough for a number of reasons. One, because you're learning to think and approach problems from a completely different way. And that's what the, the, one of the values of law school is teaching you how to think like a lawyer. So it's all that analysis. It's a lot of reading, but it's not beyond your, your capability. And so uh, there are a lot of programs also that help you get ready for it. Julie mentioned the uh, commercial programs that are out there like Kaplan and PowerScore and Princeton and Test Masters. And, and you look at one of those programs, and if you can, you, you pay for one of those programs and you get additional support. But you can also go on the Law School Admission Council website, which is lsac.org. You can get past exams and practice materials uh, so that you can find ways to get ready for that exam. You can also go on their website called discoverlaw.org, and it tells you about different programs and, and activities that you can be part of. Clio is another source. Clio.org is, is also a good source that you can look at. Excellent. One thing that just occurred to me that might be really valuable for people to understand is that the LSAT does not require you to know anything about the law. You start learning about the law and how to become a lawyer and how to pass the bar in law school. The LSAT is about your fundamental skills about your ability to reason, about your ability to read and comprehend what you read and be able to reiterate what that was that you just read, and logic skills. It does not require you at all to have a pre-law degree or any sort of basis or pre-work requisite in okay. law itself. And that's why when you're in college, you can take any major and then apply to law school. You can be a philosophy major. You can be a literature major. You can be an engineer. Uh, all those disciplines have the, the foundations that you need to demonstrate an ability uh, to, to think, reason, read, and write. And then once you're in law school, you get to learn the law. And you, you get to learn how to find out what the law is. And in some respects, you even get a, a way to learn how to create new law and, and to make new possibilities for this country. McKinsey, what's your feeling about going straight from college to law school or um, perhaps maybe working before? I, I took two years off and was a teacher um, in North Lawndale. And I'm, I'm very happy that I did. I think I grew up a lot. I think that I learned why I was going to law school and I had a better understanding about who I was and what my goals were. Um, that's not to say that you shouldn't or can't go right after college. I have a lot of friends that did that. Um, it's just a, it's a matter of preference. It just a, it depends if, you're, if you think you're ready, if you want to go out into the working world and try something for a bit and see if it's a good fit. Um, especially given how expensive law school is, it's definitely, I think, a good, a good option to take a year or two off and try to explore the law if you can, work for a legal nonprofit, be a legal assistant, try, try to somehow get involved um, with the legal system to see if you're interested in it or to try to find that passion so that when you go to law school you have an understanding of, of the direction that you want to take your, your legal education. Um, so it all comes down to personal preference, but um, I guess my recommendation would be to at least take a couple years off, learn about yourself, learn about, learn about the world, explore, 